In this video, I'm going to be walking you through imaging of the gallbladder from a radiologist's perspective. For more educational resources, like our progress notebook, check out medicalbasics.com. So in this specific video, I'm going to be talking a very broad overview on the various modalities and a typical workflow on how you should approach radar per quadrant pain or imaging of the gallbladder. In other videos, I'll be walking more specifically into the different modalities and also uh, some diseases. So there's probably four different types of imaging modalities that you can use, ultrasound, CT, MRI, nuclear medicine, and I'll kind of walk you through each one of those. So the first one is going to be ultrasound. It's probably the, the most common and the first step that you're going to be thinking about when you order imaging for right upper quadrant pain. For example, if you're concerned about acute cholecystitis and this is your top differential, this is going to be the first method that you're going to be using to, to image that. And the reason why is, is a number of reasons. One, there's no radiation. It's fast. There's real-time imaging. And you're going to get uh, actual data coming back at you. For example, sonographic Murphys. Sonographic Murphys is essentially when you are imaging specifically over the gallbladder, that's the maximal pain of interest, right? You could be, you could have pain in the right upper quadrant. It could be over your liver. It could be, you know, over your pancreas, over whatever in the right upper quadrant. But specifically, if you have pain when you're imaging over the gallbladder and when you're pressing down, that's a sonographic Murphy's and it correlates with the positive Murphy's sign. The downside was that in ultrasound, you can't image other things. You can image other things, but in our protocols, you're only specifically looking at very specific things in the right upper quadrant or kind of surrounding structures. So you're gonna be looking for the gallbladder, the biliary system, the liver. Sometimes you'll be looking at hepatic vasculature depending on how thorough of an exam you're gonna be doing, but you're not gonna be really looking for much else. You're not gonna be assessing for bowel or stomach. The pancreas is very limited in evaluation you're also not going to be looking for things outside. So you may look at the, the, the right kidney. You may or may not look at the left kidney or the bladder. And so there's a lot of things that can cause right upper quadrant pain that you wouldn't necessarily look for in a typical ultrasound. So that's kind of the limitations of the exam. The next study is going to be a CT. And this is really, you know, what a lot of clinicians tend to go to first, not necessarily as a, a good or bad thing. I think that there's certain indications where you would want to have a CT first and certain indications where you want to have an ultrasound first. Some of those situations are, you know, and the benefits of a CT is it's very broad, right? So you're not specifically looking just at the right upper quadrant or the gallbladder. You're looking at the entire abdomen. And if you extend it farther, you're also including the pelvis as well. So if you don't necessarily know what you're looking for, or you may not have a, you know, not all the signs or the symptoms are pointing directly towards, for example, cholecystitis. CT may be something that may be beneficial for you, or it may be something that you'll be using after the fact. Let's say the ultrasound was equivocal or maybe it was negative and you need to find another cause for this patient's pain. So the benefits of it is that it's quite fast. I mean, there's going to be a, a line that you have to wait for the patient, but let's say you're in the ED and there's no nobody waiting for a study, which is probably not very common, but if that were the case, it is in theory a very fast exam, right? The actual acquisition of a CT is, you know, a couple seconds. Right. Whereas ultrasound could take 30 minutes to actually acquire. I and mean, the other, like I mentioned, it's non-targeted. And the cons of it is that there's a fair amount of radiation. So in pediatrics, more young patients, radiation is a very real thing and you don't want to give them extra exposure to radiation if you don't need to. Um, and it also may require contrast and typically it does require contrast. So that can be an issue, especially for patients with renal disease. Just in summary, it's good when you're unsure. Older patients, when you may not have the best history or they have dementia or also just in general, they're often going to have other incidentals that could be contributing to the the pain. You may want this for pre-op or anatomy. Let's say you got a right upper quadrant ultrasound, it was positive, but you want to see whether or not there's any other aberrant anatomy, what the vasculature would be like, what, you know, maybe there could be a duplicated duct, uh, sorry, a duplicated gallbladder or variant anatomy in either the arterial system or the biliary system. That would be important information that you may want to know, depending on your surgeon, may want to know prior to, to actually taking out the gallbladder to avoid other complications down the line. And also, 
could be used for additional imaging. The next imaging modality would be MRI. And you would think that, oh, MRI, you know, you get all this extra information, should be the, the best choice for imaging of the gallbladder. And that's not necessarily the case. And that's actually typically not the case. There's a number of reasons why this may not be the case. One, it's very expensive. It's very slow. So a typical MRI of the abdomen, plus or minus the pelvis, could take upwards of, you know, 40 minutes to an hour, and patients need to be very stable, right? They have to be very still for the entire exam, otherwise your exam may not be very beneficial. The benefit of MRI or the specific situations where you may want it, and it's probably number one, especially when you have acute cholecystitis or concern for that is evaluation of the biliary system. So let's say you already had a right upper quadrant ultrasound that was positive, then you may want to get an MRI if you're concerned for cholelithiasis. Now, typically you should be able to get some inkling, like for example, the CBD being dilated on an ultrasound, which would push you towards wanting to evaluate for cholelithiasis, which is a gallbladder, uh, sorry, a stone within the biliary system, not within the gallbladder, that would be causing obstruction. So that would be one situation where you would want to evaluate for or use an MRI to evaluate the gallbladder. Another one would be some type of malignancy. Let's say you saw some type of mass or, or, or something within the ultrasound. Again, all of these start typically start with an ultrasound. You're never going to start just as your first study with an MRI. Anatomy, similar to a CT, you can assess for a variant anatomy or uh, some type of bile leak. Let's say this was post-operative or this was, you know, for some reason you had concern for bile leak, maybe they had a cholecystostomy tube and now they are having recurrent symptoms, that would be one potential other cause for getting an MRI. But typically, like I was mentioning before, this is not going to be your first study. This is going to be a study somewhere, potentially somewhere down the line, but definitely not your first study. And the final study that you can use, which is still within the breadth of radiology, is a HIDA scan. And so the HIDA scan, not, not too many people know about it, but it is a very useful exam and it's something that we often recommend if there's some equivocal exam on ultrasound. So typically they get the ultrasound first and then after that, if we are you know, maybe on the fence, it may be acute cholecystitis, maybe not, then we would recommend the HIDA. And the whole purpose of a HIDA, which I'll go into much more detail in, in other exams, this is a normal HIDA. Essentially what you want to see is you want to see filling of the gallbladder, which is this guy right there. So if you have filling of the gallbladder, that essentially means the pressure within the gallbladder is not gr too great that it would apply filling of the of the gallbladder with this radio tracer right so you're injecting it into the bloodstream and it's specifically going to location where this tracer will be taken up namely the liver the gallbladder the biliary system you can also see a little bit in the in the bladder and in, in the vasculature as well but what you're looking for is you're looking for uptake within the gallbladder and if it is a, a positive case of acute cholecystitis you wouldn't you wouldn't have any uptake in the gallbladder and we can definitively say this is acute cholecystitis Cystitis. The other benefit would be that you have real-time data, at least to some degree. These are, you know, in increments, so it's not every second that you're getting imaging, but every couple of minutes, for example, you're getting you're getting imaging. These ones are in two minutes, so you can see, you know, each of these are two-minute incre increments. So you're having some real-time data. The downside, which people often don't think about, is that there is a considerable amount of radiation for nuclear medicine exams. The other thing is there's a lot of coordination. So the coordination can be a number of things. One, you need to have coordination with your nuclear medicine department. So they have to have the tracer. They have to have the staff. Oftentimes, you can't get these on weekends because it's not a very common thing to, to bring in the entire team of nuclear medicine staff to, to do these studies. And you also have to have the radio tracer on hand, which not all facilities have it 24-7, seven days a week. The other thing that you have to be mindful of is patients can't have certain medications. For example, they can't have opioids. So if they are on patients, pain medications, it's going to be a very limited exam. It's not that they can't 100% have opioids. However, it's going to be a very limited exam. And so that's where you're going to want to talk to you, your radiologist to figure out whether or not it's something that can be done or not. In addition, there's a lot of coordination in regards to feeding. So they, they can't be MPO for too long and they also can't be MPO for too short. So typically it's somewhere in the range of four to 24 hours is, is kind of the, the time frame that you're going to be looking for. There's ways to get around it. We can give medication so that that's not the case, but for you know an, an optimal exam, that's kind of the coordination that you have to think about. So situations where this can be beneficial or useful are in situations like cholecystitis, both acute and chronic. Cholecystitis is when you would want to use a high 
item, bile leaks, similar to, to the MRI example that I gave, some type of biliary obstruction or atresia. Hepatitis, especially in little kids, can also be used for a HIDA. And there's many other utilities of a HIDA, but those are just kind of the most common. So this is the basic framework that I would think about for if a patient came in with a quadrant pain, what would I order first and kind of what would be the algorithm? So typically, if you're very sure, uh, I guess we can start with the not so sure. So if you're not sure, it's non-focal exam, right? You're going to go probably, you could go to an ultrasound, but if it's non-focal and you're not really sure, oftentimes I see people getting a CT and that's not wrong. So you get a CT first. If there's some other cause, then you're done or depending on the cause, you may need additional tests for that. If, the, if it's a gallbladder cause and it's kind of definitely positive, then you can go to surgery or you can medically manage it. If there's some type of equivocal nature of it, then you can get an ultrasound. And if it's still equivocal, then you can get a HIDA. Or if you know for sure, then you can get start your surgery or some medical management. On the flip side, if it's focal and you're very concerned about some type of acute cholecystitis, then you're going to want to start with an ultrasound. You're not going to start with a CT. You want to start with the ultrasound. Or if it's a young patient, then you want to also start with an ultrasound. If it's positive, then you're done. You go into surgery and you're done. If it's positive or it's equivocal, then you can get a HIDA. And then you can, you know, if it's positive, just like before, then you're, you're done and you you either do surgery or medically manage it. And if it's negative, then it's not acute cholecystitis, right? It's a definitive exam, so you're you're done. Or you have to kind of explore other options and kind of go down this, this path and get a CT. If the ultrasound is clearly negative, then you don't need to do a HIDA. You need to do something else, right? You need to figure out maybe there's some other cause, you know, pancreatitis, appendicitis, or some other cause, you can get a CT. Or if that was for some reason the only thing you were thinking about and you can exclude it, then you can finish right there. And so that's kind of the benefit of getting an ultrasound. That could be potentially the only test that you need. No radiation, it's fairly cheap, and it gives you very specific answers, and then that could be the final exam. So this is kind of the basic basic framework for imaging of the right upper quadrant. Be sure to check out medicalbasics.com for more educational resources like our HMP notebook and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.